The experts are saying that they are on high alert because multiple volcanoes in the Pacific Ring of Fire are suddenly coming to life. And it's not only that, it's confirmed that the Pacific Ring of Fire is especially active right now with earthquakes, volcanoes. It's this 25,000 miles of ring that's basically going around the Pacific Plate, the Pacific Ocean, with a lot of dangerous subduction zones, Nankai Trough in Japan, Cascadia Fault along the west coast of the US and Canada, Kamchatka in Russia that just had a big, big earthquake swarm. So several volcanoes at the Pacific Ring of Fire have shown increased activity recently, and that has prompted close monitoring by the experts for potential eruptions. So the Pacific Ring of Fire, they also call it, they give it another name, some only say the Ring of Fire, but also the Circum Pacific Belt. Circum is like surrounding. It's basically this 25,000 mile chain of volcanoes and earthquake zones from South America to Alaska, across Japan, and even down to our friends in New Zealand. I know I have many viewers from New Zealand. And the USGS, the US Geological Survey has found at least four volcanoes, all in the US, that are rumbling right now, including the great Sitkin volcano in Alaska that has been steadily erupting lava into its summit crater right now for nearly four years. And recent satellite imagery confirms the eruption remains slow and non-explosive at the moment, which is great. So the lava is continuing to flow southwest at that volcano. And I've recently reported about that unusually large earthquake swarm at Mount Rainier in Washington, also a volcano on the Pacific Ring of Fire in close pr proximity to Mount St. Helens, by the way. Then we have Hawaii, Kiolea is basically erupting from one episode to the next one continuously continues to build pressure continues to build and continues to have these beautiful beautiful eruptions and we just had a new eruption at Kiloia. and even if it the eruption paused a little bit there the sulfur dioxide emissions remain elevated between these episodes then we have actual sea mount, an underwater volcano as large as a city offshore of the Oregon coast. My last video was about that guy that is about to erupt. Check it out in the end screen. It's under very close observation. They have a lot of measuring instruments around that one. Really, really interesting. More details in my video. You see the pictures of this underwater volcano. They have cameras there. They're waiting for the eruption that could come at any second to film it. This is an exciting first time. So they say this eruption will happen in 2025, but now they're saying maybe we're at the brink. Maybe it could happen now. And the scientists are telling us that all these volcanoes are unpredictable because they're resulting from natural movement in the Earth's crust, and that we still cannot predict. And there's so much moving, especially along the Pacific Ring of Fire. The Pacific Plate is sinking underneath the neighboring plates, a subduction zone along the Pacific Ring of Fire, and that creates these earthquakes and these volcanoes and these eruptions. Good thing is about these volcanoes that are active, even with their earthquake swarms with lava flowing or eruptions at Kilauea, for example, none of these volcanoes currently threaten the nearby communities. I hope it remains like this. Of course, each of these volcanoes that are active right now, they have their own history and behavioral pattern. You can't throw them all in one pot just because they're on the ring of fire. Great Sitkin Volcano, located in Alaska's Aleutian Islands, began erupting in 2021 after decades of inactivity. All of a sudden, boof, there we go. Just in April, a USGS volcanologist reported that the lava has slowly filled that crater over the years. Yeah, if it keeps erupting, same at Kilauea, that crater is filling up with lava. The Sitkin volcano has built now a thick dome. 
So far, it has not triggered big ash clouds or any air travel disruptions, because that would be a key concern in the region. But the lava is still pushing out of the summit crater at the Great Sitkin Volcano. Not explosive, but steady. The small quakes there are continuing as well. And there's absolutely no sign that this eruption is ending anytime soon. And then I have erupted about that one too. It's in Alaska, Mount Spur, roughly 80 miles west of Anchorage. Had, it, had its last explosive eruption in 1992, sending ash clouds 40,000 feet, guys, up into the sky. And of course, people were worried when we look at the recent shallow earthquake swarms because they could be early warning signs that something like this could happen again. The experts, though, are saying that right now they have no indication for magma movement, that magma is trying to cause an eruption, but that can change. Because Mount Spur has had these shallow earthquake swarms basically since February this year, it still doesn't show the other indicators that we need in order to say an eruption might be in, imminent. It is kind of quiet. There is no gas, no lava, and no expected eruption. The USGS, though, has kept it under advisory level. So it's not green. Kilauea is very close to residential areas. That's why they're monitoring this one very, very closely, because it has caused destruction in the past. In 2018, the lava flows coming from Kilauea have destroyed over 700 homes in the Leilani Estates subdivision. So I don't think Hawaii wants to have another disaster after that and after the fire. So what the scientists are doing right now, they're tracking the surface deformation. They want to see where is it rising? How strong is it? They're looking at the quake movement. Are the quakes moving? Is this an indication that magma is intruding in other areas and could open up a fissure or a crack nearby um, densely populated areas? They're looking at the gas emissions to anticipate another potential hazard phase. Because let's not kid ourselves, Kilauea is one of the most active volcanoes in the world and of the Pacific Ring of Fire. It sits basically above a hot spot in the Earth's mantle. That's basically a fixed location, a fixed plume of heat and magma that stays in place while the Pacific plate slowly moves over it. And what the seismologists are concerned about now regarding Kilauea is that it's swelling again and that it's showing more earthquakes and more signs that an eruption could happen soon that might be dangerous to the settlements. I mean, you have to, the, the latest phase of this cycle of volcanic eruptions began in 1983, and I think we're at episode 29 or even 30 right now. And it does pose a threat to humans. It has a lot of gas, ash, emissions, has the potential for devastating eruptions. Mount Rainier, despite not erupting in centuries, still also, I've mentioned it before, remains one of the most hazardous volcanoes in North America because it has this feature of dangerous lahars that could very, very quickly destroy these densely populated areas there. Check out my videos. I put it in the end screen. I've made a detailed description with graphics where these lahars would go. And in 2023, the USGS has conducted a survey and they found that even small eruptions or earthquakes could trigger these deadly lahars, these mud flows, capable of reaching communities like Orting, Pulley up within minutes. And then there's Tacoma, there's Olympia. And this earthquake swarm that I just reported about, we had the highest, I think, was magnitude 2.4, which is quite significant for a volcano. And they originated just a few miles beneath the summit of Mount Rainier but deep enough to raise concern among the scientists. Thankfully, coming with the swarm, they have no significant ground deformation detected. 
So the current earthquake swarm adds to the thousands of quakes that have been detected since 2020, but it's very unusual because it's three to four times as many earthquakes that have occurred in a normal swarm. Despite all this, the experts say there is no cause for panic. The activity that we're seeing, they say, fits into long term patterns of the Pacific Ring of Fires. But of course, if you're close to that volcano, well, it is cause for, I don't want to say panic, but concern. The Lahars at Mount Rainy, I would panic if I lived there. And they do um, evacuation drills and stuff like this on a regular basis. They just did this with school kids, thousands of school kids, I think 40,000 school kids. Check out my video here. It's really, really interesting, guys. So this was just a little overview about what's happening with these volcanoes along the Pacific Ring of Fire. Of course, there's so many others that are erupting in Japan and, and everywhere, but um, these s stand out because they're in a certain part, basically mostly yeah, in the US, right? Um, if you liked it, click a like, subscribe. If you want to support the channel, guys, check out the links in the description. Click the join button to become a monthly member of the channel for behind the scene videos, chaotic stuff about me. So thanks for the coffee. Thanks for the supers. Shout out to all my members and to my viewers. And I hope to see you right there in the next one. Bye.